Let's talk about the Linux dstat command. Again, this is one of those commands that's now pretty common in every Linux distribution. And it should be in your arsenal of any kind of diagnostic when you're looking at single node performance. dstat, like a top command or something like that, is a one-stop shop. It's meant to give you a synthesized view of everything happening on your system so you can make some choices, maybe see some things that are anomalous, make decisions based on data when you're running a node. So it's meant to combine a lot of things like IOSTAT, VMSTAT, the stat commands into one cohesive picture. And you can run all those commands and they are very useful, but it's great whenever you have to do some quick diagnostics to not have to run 30 or 40 commands to go figure out what you want. If you're having a burning down node, now is a good time to understand what's happening with your node. So the command for dstat by default doesn't include memory statistics, but if you really wanna see it all, really just use dstat the dash am. The dash a is everything, that's all, and m includes memory statistics. This is the command as you should type it on the command line because let's face it, you want it all, right? And this is gonna give it to you. So let's take a look at what the command generates when you do type a dstat am. So the output is again in this block text format. This is a Linux command line, get over it. You're gonna have a lot of text, but it's organized in a way that's really helpful. So the A, all the all information on the left, and in this diagram, you see the M, the memory information on the right. So in total, across the screen, you're gonna get a very clear picture. The information that's on here is very similar to the top command. However, it's meant as like a waterfall display. So it's very updatable and it shows a lot of information quickly. So as the system is running, you're gonna see these statistics changing over time. First section is the CPU stats. Now these are system areas that you should be used to as an admin, but just real quick, these are some of the things that it'll show you. For instance, the percentage time spent on user mode execution. Again, very important compared to system mode execution. These two things need to be in some sort of harmonious balance. If the system time is super high, then you have some background process in the kernel that's eating up all of the system time. And that could be detrimental to a running node. You wanna see a lot more going on in user land because that's where your DataStacks Enterprise and Cassandra nodes are running. The idle, the wait, those two things are in conjunction with the system and user time. So you see these as a big number, really. But I like to make sure that the weight is about as close to zero as possible. Again, system weight is one of those things that it's not good. That means that the CPU is sitting there drumming its fingers, waiting for something else to be ready. And that's not good, because usually it's the disk. Let's not forget, the disk is the weakest link in every computer, ever. It is the slowest, it will make everything else wait. So if you see a wait number higher, time to go look at the disk. The hardware and software interrupts give you that synthesized number between the two, give you some insight of what that weight is about. And in this case, if we're gonna see a lot of hardware, that's not good because it's waiting for the disk probably. Software weights, those are a little harder. I think those point to more of a bug in your code. Don't do that, right? If you see a lot of software interrupts, there's something hard linked or locked in a spin loop that's not giving it up. And again, not a good situation, but at least you know what it is. The disk statistics are really interesting because that's where we really have to do a lot of diagnosis on a running Cassandra node. So when we look at disk statistics, we're saying, hey, how much was read, how much was written, and is it really what I think it should be, or is it a lot lower? A lot of diagnosis is done right at the disk level, because let's face it, if it's gonna fail, that's probably where it's gonna be. Network statistics aren't really the biggest problem, but it gives you some indication if it's trying to do something pretty heavy on the network. For instance, if you're doing some sort of streaming operation, you're gonna see these numbers really going up or down. On a normal running Cassandra node, you should see traffic that is indicative of how much use it has, but if you see these really high numbers and you're close to saturating your link, that's an early warning sign that you have some big trouble somewhere. So you can see how much data has been sent or received and use those for your diagnostics. With paging, since we really don't recommend that you page your data inside of a running Cassandra or DataStax Enterprise node, those numbers should be close or at zero. And this is where you find out if it's actually true. You see the amount of memory that's being paged, but then you start getting into system statistics. And this does not have to do with paging. 
This has to do with how well your CPU is doing. And now with Datastax Enterprise 6, this is a big change because you should start seeing these numbers go down quite a bit. Because of the way that it manages the CPU, you should start seeing less interrupts and even less context switches. Context switches are how many times it has to do a stack swap out. Now that's a complicated topic, probably for another day, but essentially what it is, is that there's a running stack, each process has a running stack, and when you do a context switch, you're moving to another running process on that CPU. The less context switches you have, the more efficient your CPU is being used. So for overall quality, that's a good thing to have. You want low context switches for a highly efficient system. With modern multi-core systems, that number being low really helps. And again, these paging stats, if they're not zero, that's some smoke that you need to go investigate because you're running out of memory somewhere and the system is really thrashing. It needs some help. System stats, again, used for those contention, what's happening, maybe you're getting a lot of weights, but also that you want to see those numbers pretty low. That means you have an efficiently running system. The memory usage, that M part of the dstack command, this is what's happening in total for your memory. So this is the use memory, how much you're actually allocating, how many buffers you're using on the file system cache, which is really important, how much is actually cached, and then how much is free. That free unallocated memory is really important to watch because as it gets closer to zero, you're running out of memory. And that means you're gonna have to start paging. So in an example where you might be diagnosing memory leak problems, you'll see that free go down to zero, the use go all the way up. The free zero is really a problem because then you start seeing paging. When you start seeing paging, you know that you're in a bad spot with that disk. The system should be able to balance out the free memory without having to page. That means that it's working its processes properly. If a process is not behaving like a good citizen on the system, you start seeing bad things happen like free going down to zero. So using DSTAT can give you more information about your system, understand what's happening, but it's one of those powerful commands that if you get to know it, it can save your life in a really tight situation.